A really warm welcome. My name is Charles White. I would like to welcome you to our first ever webinar for the Prowess Leadership Institute. Prowess Leadership Institute exists to help leaders and raise the righteous standard of leadership in the world. Right now this is needed. We are in a grip of a pandemic and this webinar has been, this is the first ever webinar that we are hosting and it's been set up to help leaders survive this pandemic, but not just survive, but to structure and strategically position themselves for a victorious position in the future and to come out of this pandemic much stronger than ever before. So today you'll hear tools, lessons, uh, advice from business leaders, from uh, both in the private and corporate and uh, pro uh, public sector. And these leaders have, are friends, they reputable, they're highly respected and have a, a clear insight into what's going on, how to help you, how to navigate your way out of this pandemic. And I would like to welcome Kelly Bucheli Maloko and Martin van der Merwe, Roland Hein and René Schonken who are our panelists today and they will be sharing their views. I'm going to ask three strategic questions, which is where are we now, where are we going in the future, what do they interpret the future to be, and then how can we get there. So thank you for tuning in. We're going to switch over to the webinar. And at the end of the webinar, there's an opportunity to pay it forward. This is a free webinar. These, all these things that we're setting up trying to make accessible to business leaders right now. And if you want to pay it forward, you want to support in any way, there will be a link posted at the end where you can use to buy a PayPal to give a gift or pay it forward or help other business leaders attend these seminars or conferences or webinars and make the material accessible to them. So it takes a lot of infrastructure, a lot of um, input and even staff behind the scenes put this all together and I kindly ask think about paying it forward and being a blessing so let's cross over to the webinar today thank you for joining in taking the time the views and comments portrayed here are the views of the individual speakers not necessarily prowess leadership institute so let's draw some truth from them some encouragement and some hope Thank you for joining me. I want to introduce, before we kick off, my partner and friend for 20 years. There are two people getting a huge crown in heaven. It's his wife and me. We stuck out with, with him for over 20 years. And it's Rene Shonken. He is um, an amazing friend and challenges anything that can be challenged. Uh, Rene has got a brilliant mind, a, a chartered accounting background. He, he loves figures and walks in faith. And so Rene, a, a warm welcome. He, he's most creative when he stands up with a whiteboard and a pen. So I, I hope you bring that creativity out sitting down today. Welcome Rene. Thank you, Charles, and uh, yeah, welcome to everyone who's joining us. Really, it's a wonderful um, privilege for us to serve you in this manner. And um, so really, yeah, we just really trust that we can point you to Jesus, the Christ, our Lord today, in all those things that you are having your questions and battling with, because that is the purpose of why we're together, is to point to Jesus. He is our Joshua as he leads us through the promised land to possess it. So thank you, Charles. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'm, I'm going to kick off. And again, the whole purpose of this webinar, it's not so that I can learn new technology or our panelists can spend time um, just chatting. It's really to help leaders make sense of the time and help you prepare and take advantage of the opportunities to strategically position yourself to receive grace for the season 
and to function effectively from a different dimension. So the, I'm convinced that these panelists will be able to speak into that. I'm gonna ask, uh, take a strategic approach, the strategic thinking model, and really just ask three views. Where are we now? Where do we see the future going? And then how, we, how can we position ourselves? What are the opportunities out there? What do we need to do as people from a kingdom that has been invisible for, for so long, which is now, I believe, the time for this kingdom become, to become visible in the earth? How does that kind of happen? So my question to, to the panelists is really, can you make sense of the now? Where are we now? And maybe, Madhushaba, the markets, you're watching it literally every second. Just a reality uh, as to a, a reality check. Where are we now as a, as, a, as a market, a global market, a local market? What, what are your views? Thank you very much, Charles. I think that's a much uh, deeper question which goes beyond uh, what the markets are doing and what the economies are doing. I think all of these indicators and the changes that we're seeing in terms of uh, you know, economic data or activity or financial markets and the lockdown, there are symptoms of something greater that the Lord is actually doing at this point in time. And I just want to touch on, on four, four things briefly, and I'll, 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 I'll end there. I think we need to understand what the agenda of the Father is in this time, um, that he has promised us that he will shake everything until that which is not shaken remains. So when you go through scripture over and over again, he talks about the shaking that will take place uh, Jose, um, you know, across Haggai 2. Uh, is a very uh, instrumental scripture where he says, in a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former houses, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares, declares the, the Lord Almighty. So we need to understand how he sees things at this point in time, that the shaking that we're seeing was meant to come. Scripture has prophesied it. It is a fulfillment of prophecy. Um, he is aligning the destiny of nations at this point in time. He is through the shaking, he is actually judging the kingdoms of this world and uh, his enemies. But at the same time, he is actually shaking the Ecclesia for the sons of God to arise and manifest at this point in time. So Matthew 16 talks about when Yeshua gave the disciples the kingdom mandate, right? Because they had a revelation of who he is. And he gives them a mandate. He says, upon the revelation that you have of who I am, which flesh and blood has not revealed to you, I will build my government, the Ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not be able to prevail against us. And he also gave, gave them the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatever they bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So the Lord is really reminding us as his sons that this is a time for us to arise. Isaiah 60 talks about that we need to arise for the light of God is shining upon us. Um, so there is this restoration and rebuilding of and strengthening of the Ecclesia for us to arise, uh, stay to attention, and be in a position to hear instructions of what he would have us do at this point in time. We know that he uses the times and seasons to fulfill his mandate, and we're coming from the Passover, which was quite strategic. 
And now we in that season of waiting for, you know, for Pentecost to come. Um, so in this time, he's really calling every nation, every government, every president, every market or trader, every uh, child of God, anybody who's created by him to recognize that he is God. And it's really a, a, a mercy call of alignment. Um, so when things are shaken, the markets are falling, we're losing money, businesses are being shut, economies are being shut. I think that's the focus that we need to, to really pay attention to as a start and align with him because in aligning with him, then we will go to understanding from a strategic point of view, what are the next steps? What is required of us in terms of the next steps that we need to take? Uh, Charles, Charles, you're Charles, you're muted. Oh, good. Yeah. The, the word shaking makes me shake. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, Madi Shaba. Roland, you're, where, where are we now? Yeah. yeah uh, Charles, uh, where we are now uh, in terms of, um, I would say, God's perspective, uh, and Kelefilo is 100% right. There's definitely a shaking taking place. Uh, but it's also a foreshadowing of what God has in mind for the future. Um, so when we look at where we are now, uh, it's always good to then understand um, in terms of God's timeline, what is the end goal? Yeah. And God has this end goal in mind and and we are hurtling towards it at an astonishing pace. And hopefully that will unfold as we start to speak more about um, what's going to happen in the future and, and so forth. Uh, so if you, for instance, look at Isaiah 24, and especially from the, the message, which is a fantastic paraphrase and contemporary interpretation of that prophecy. And that specific prophecy is telling us in quite a lot of detail where we are now as a type or shadow of the final judgment which is to come in the last seven years or what is called the, the tribulation. So whether you believe there is going to be a tribulation or not uh, is irrelevant um, because God has a specific timeline. He's, he's got specific events in mind and specific appointments in time. And where we are now um, is, and is a clear and very graphic indication that we are fast approaching the, the very final end um, or that end stage of final judgment uh, to come of the whole world, of all nations, uh, and Israel uh, in particular. So I think it's very important to understand what, what God's word is saying in terms of his prof prophetic timeline, how he sees the future, um, because prophecy is nothing else but history in advance. And when we want to know what's going to happen in the future, the best um, reference is God's word. So I'd encourage all, all participants to uh, read Isaiah 24, and um, especially from the message, to see where we are now. Uh, just to give you a, a little flavor of of what is in there, it, it speaks, for instance, of two things that are pertinent where we are now. It says no one is unaffected. Now, in terms of COVID-19, um, not, not everybody might be infected, but everybody is certainly affected and will be affected. So, so not a single person will escape in terms of its effects and effects. And that is part of the shaking that, that we've heard earlier. So that's the first thing we take away is that, yes, this is definitely part of God's prophetic timeline, part of what he sees as the, as the final outcome. But God is not responsible for what is happening at this point in time. It is, it is merely a consequence and outplaying of the fallen state of, of the whole world. 
So when we look at Isaiah, we understand, yes, that is for a particular end time, but it does also speak of a warning in terms of what is happening around us so that we understand very clearly from an ecclesiastical point of view or the church's point of view, uh, what is actually happening around us. Uh, so we, we take that warning very seriously, especially as, as the church. Uh, but we also see uh, that um, uh, God has a spe specific response um, in, in terms of where uh, the, the church or the ecclesia will definitely play a, a critical role and a crucial role. And his promise is tremendous because he says, those who love him dearly, he will shield and he, he will protect. And we will actually prosper uh, during this time of great distress and uncertainty. But we can speak about that uh, more uh, going forward. So, yes, where we are now is, is tremendously distressing, volatile, uncertain. Nobody who knows. But I just want you to take heart. Um, really start to look at uh, God's prophecy in terms of where we are going to end up in the future. Because God's prophecy is not there to scare us, but it's there to prepare us. So when we understand prophecy a lot better, we have a much better understanding of what's happening around us at, at this point in time. So I think, Charlie, with that, I, I just want to sum up where we are now is that, yes, it's distressful. It's, it's really bad. Nobody uh, escapes it. But uh, th there is definitely a silver lining in all of this. Wow. Thank you. Shaking and silver lining. Uh, Martin, you, I, I've, I've gone through your books. I've tried to look up in your dictionary, COVID-19, it's not there. Did you forget about it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charles. <laughs> uh, for reminding me, I will do my best to put it in for you. Um, but, uh, you know, if you look at what's happening today, um, the word says that in Proverbs, there's nothing new in the world. And I went back to look at the um, post effects of the 2017 18 uh, Spanish plague that hit the world. Now, uh, to see what the effects will be, because we can learn from the future, hold on to the Lord for the, uh, learn from the past, we can hold on to the Lord for the future, and we can live with the Word of God in our hands to guide us for today. So, if you look at the, the post effects of the Spanish flu, it was a massive impact on the retail sector. So uh, I would say that the whole retail sector in, in our country uh, is up in the air and need to re-look at the way that they do business. I suspect that we will see a massive increase in home deliveries, uh, orders from, uh, you know, depots rather than going to supermarkets uh, to buy your clothes or to buy your your uh, your um, groceries etc so there will be a massive if, if uh, roland talks about the shift i can see a massive shift taking place there i'm working primarily in the public sector at the moment and what i can see is that the whole public sector will have to review the way that they do business, how they invest, what the investment in the infrastructure that is required for this new econ economy. It is not a matter of just uh, a reconfiguring of the current economy or talking about the fourth industrial uh, revolution. This is a different uh, or a revolution of a different kind that we have to realign ourselves to a new future. And if you look at the book of Revelation 3 verse 10, it says that because you have guarded and kept my word of patience, endurance, and have held fast the lesson of my patience with the expectant endurance that I give you, I also will keep you safe 
from the hour of trial of testing, which is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell upon the earth. And uh, I think that we are in a time of trial and time of testing as it is right now. And it will depend on who our, what, what our character is, who we trust in, who we believe in right now to guide us towards the way ahead. I believe that God is good and Satan is evil. And whatever evil we see is definitely not from God. So what we're experiencing in this trial is an attack from Satan. And we know in James 4 verse 7, it says, Submit yourself unto the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee. It is now the time that we as Christians need to uh, step back or step forward or get up and uh, stand against the attacks that are coming against us. Because I don't believe it's God attacking us. I believe it's Satan attacking us and that we need to take up our godly authority and stand up and say, here we are, children of God. We're moving forward in the covering and the promises of the great I am. Thanks, Martha. Wow, that, that was exceptional. That, you just got strength back. <laughs> I could see your color change and the strength come back while you're talking. See, I well, always heal you. Yeah, I almost jumped up and did a dance for you. Then I wouldn't be able to walk for the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. It, I like the words. It's a revolution of a different kind. And it's a, it's a shift. It's a, a mega shift, like you say. So thank you. We, for those who have tuned in, we, we're unpacking the current state, where we're at, both in the economy and as a people, as a church, as a called out and ecclesia, we're asking where, where's the now? We're using a strategic approach now, where are we heading? And then um, at the end, we're gonna get the juicy bits is, how are we gonna get there? What do we need to do now? How do we need to position ourselves for taking advantage of the opportunities, the victory that's already been won? How do we appropriate that victory and manifest it in our lives. So that's at the end. I, Renier, and now you, you've been meeting with the governor you, of the Reserve Bank. You've been um, tuning in and meeting with all those big finance houses. Um, where are we now? Oh, thanks, Jules. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's a, it's a, it's a question that requires a, a multi-layered um, approach to it, um, because everything is in is in is in context. And one of the things that Charles know that we have learned through the mentoring years is that what the Lord has taught us is that whenever you're confronted with something, the first question that you ask is not what would Jesus do. Um, because when we ask that question, um, because you always ask it in context of a now scenario. And when you ask that question, the reality is the answers that you will get, you will get through the own filters that you have within your own life. The question, the first question we always ask, and that's the same thing we did when this thing happened, is, Lord, what do you see? Father, what do you see? That's the first question. Out of that, you wait. It requires waiting. And you cannot make up your mind as to, as to what, what you think the Father sees. The second question out of that is then, um, Lord, what do you pray? Because he says, I'm interceding 24 hours a day for you, the right hand of my Father. So, Lord, what are you praying in this, in this now? And this now, and I'm going to come now to back to the now, because the Bible what I term the multi-layered now that we need to understand because it's from different perspectives. The third question then is, Lord, what do you do? Because Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. Um, 
Uh, sorry, the third question is, Lord, what do you say? Because Jesus said, I only speak what I hear the Father speak. And the fourth question is, Lord, what do you do? Um, because Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. And we know Jesus is the firstborn amongst us. And we are being transformed into his glory and his image and his likeness. So it means that um, we are um, the Jesus walking around in today's world. That, that, that is what God has in mind. So let's come back to the now. So um, first of all, there's a now that people have that are in the world. Um, they have a now. When you ask them this question, this question have been asked on every webinar I've attended with the, with the finance leaders, the government leaders, the business leaders, you name them. This question was asked, well, what is the now? What, what do you see? And everyone is answering them, or for them is answering it from their perspective as a person in the world. Then you ask the believer the question, what do you see now? The believer must ask the father. Lord, what do you see now? What do you see the world is seeing? What do you see? And then further, we are in the context of South Africa. Then you also need to ask the question, Lord, what do you see now in, for South Africa? Where is South Africa now? Where is the world now? And where is the kingdom now? So those are the three nows that... Um, the Lord is talking to me about and that we need to understand to understand the context of where they're at. The world leaders have a very specific now that they're busy with. And I'm not going to go into detail in terms of that, but we need to understand what the world leaders are, are all about at this point in time and what their now is, what their now agenda is. Then we need to understand what is the now agenda of South Africa. And then we need to understand what is the now agenda of God for God's people in South Africa and for God's people in the world, in each and every nation. So coming back to that now, so what do the world leaders say? Where are they now? Let me, let me, let me start with them. They're using the words, the world will never be the same. And as I take that word to the Lord, the Lord says to me, nonsense. Go back to the 19, Martin just referred to the 1918 um, Spanish flu. And I went back to the 1918 Spanish flu. It didn't take too long after that that the world went back to exactly what it was during the 19 and before the 1918 Spanish flu. Yeah, certain things are going to change in terms of how people do business. Like, for example, what we're doing now, we're not having a physical conference. We're having a virtual conference. Absolutely. Those things are going to change. But the Lord said from Isaiah 26, he spoke and he said that whenever there's judgment in the earth, it is to teach the people of the earth righteousness. And then he said to me, and this one, the people will not learn righteousness. And you can go and read in Isaiah 26. So the reality from a righteous point of view, because this is where we are at is from a, from a, from a kingdom people, is about righteousness and leadership. Righteousness in business practices, righteousness in government, righteousness in that. They're not going to learn righteousness. So the now where the world is, there's still not righteousness. So the world is continuing with that agenda in terms of where they're at. So coming back to, so what they are, what, what, what they are just saying, the world markets are changing, export markets are changing completely. Um, you know, it's going to be far more difficult to export food products now because you're going to have from a hygiene point of view, I mean, you're going to need to, to really um, understand and get, your, and get your game together. At the same time, there are tremendous opportunities in terms of that. Um, then we come back to South Africa, the now for South Africa. We know what God has spoken over South Africa and Africa. And this is the now that we need to understand for South Africa and Africa. And, um, and Charles, at, at one point in time, that, that decree that the Lord spoke in June, July 2000 through um, his servant Gunnar Olsen over Africa, the Lord just got me to get it out again and say, this is the time. This is, this is, I am, this is what, I, what I'm doing. This is the now that I'm doing. I'm breaking forces. I'm breaking evil. In this, in, this, in this nation and in this continent. 
and um, and we understand that that South Africa is at a place where it is to arise. South Africa, Africa is at a place where it must arise and come to its fruitfulness, and that the Lord has destined it for, in context of the world. So, South Africa, where's South Africa now? When I listen to the leadership of South Africa, our finance minister, Mbuweni, opened the 2019 budget speech with very specific scriptures, which many of you know, I've sent it on to you. And, um, and he comes before it, and, and, and he brings the budget, really, of our nation in 2019 and 2020. And the Lord took me back to that and said, bring that budget before me. Because he brought it before me. I want you as my children that's responsible in the area of finances for this nation to bring this budget before me so that I can, what was spoken in that budget, that it can happen. Because he, he said at the start of that budget speech in 2000, he said, this budget is about a renewal. And we are in a renewal phase for this country, for this nation. So, um, yes, what I am concerned about is the words of our president when he speaks and he says we will overcome because those are humanist words those are words speaking from we as men as people we will overcome so i have i have i'm, I'm really every time when he says those words it's like an arrow into my heart and i say lord please help us please pray for let, let us pray for our leaders because that they can understand that um, we do not have the strength, we do not have the means and the might to stand. This, this COVID-19 is minor in terms of what's coming. It is minor. So um, in the context of what I understand. Um, and the Lord always said, I mean, there's always something small that comes and he says, you know, I just want you to learn, you know, come turn, turn, turn from your ways and, and actually come back. So, but that's just something for where our nation is at. So where's our leadership in our nation? So we see our judge, um, our chief justice, I mean, I mean, a man of God. So from, from that perspective, where's our leadership at? Calling upon God, knowing that it is Jesus and the blood of Jesus and the strength of Jesus as the Christ as of the universe that happened for us. So where does it bring to us as a body of Christ, understanding the signs of the time, the times and the seasons that we're in and where we're at. The reality is that 2020, this decade, is the decade for God's people. It's the decade for God's people. God is, I mean, many of the people participating in it today will know the many words that the Lord has spoken. And in January 2019, um, I was at a funeral. And um, and at this funeral, um, I said, I came a little bit late and I sat down and it was five minutes and the, the minister who was taking the funeral stopped in the middle of nowhere and he said, let me just read the scripture. And he read from Isaiah 34 verse 8. And it says, for the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. And the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, this is my word for my children for the decade to come. That's in January 2019. He announced a year of recompense where God is now saying to, and, 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 and I mean, I can't go into detail now, but the, the, the advancement that we will see as the kingdom of God in this season is something incredible. And, and the, the purpose of this now, what is the purpose of this now? This tremendous blessing that, is, that the Lord is releasing amongst his people and for his people and through his people in this decade is for the decade that is coming. But we must understand something. We are at risk as believers to dwell on the past and to dwell on the future and to miss what God is doing in the now. So we must clearly understand that we have to wait before the Lord to have a clear revelation of that the Christ be revealed in us for this now season that we are in. And that's for each and every one that's participating this, this morning. You have to be before the Lord for yourself. You must come to here before the Lord. 
your orientation, the very group that you must be part of now, now, now be part of in this season, so that you can be effective, productive in this season, in this now. And, and as we do that, we will be prepared for the next decade, the next future that is coming. So that is just in short, Charles. Wow. Thank you, Rene. So if you've tuned in, you've missed some of it. We're talking about where are we currently as a country, as a, as a globe, global community, where are we? And the, the summary, if I would just take the key words from the speakers this morning, for the last half an hour, it was, Madi Shabbos said, it's a, it's a time of tremendous shaking. Roland said, we, we're really in an end stage. Um, Martin said, it's a shift. I like the words, a revolution of a different kind. And Rene is talking about, it's time for renewal for the next decade, to position us for the next decade. So it's fantastic words, lots of hope in there, um, lots of encouragement. The, the question now is, this is where we're at. There's so much change happening. I want to take us into the future. What does the where look like? And, and there are some people, who, if I ask of the where question of where do you think you're going to be, what's going to happen with your business, your uh, organization that you represent, or the community that you lead, they can't think further than a cure for COVID-19. So that we're stuck in a pandemic, we're stuck in a, a mindset that this pandemic is our reality and it's our future. My question to, to you to speak into as panelists is really, where do you, where do you believe we're heading? Um, and it's, my eschatology is not great. I don't even want to, to venture there. But as, as a leader, as a business leader, as um, you come from so many different disciplines, if you look at your discipline, Madi Shab is watching the markets. Um, if, if you think she's looking at me, She's working from a desk right now. She's actually working live, looking at markets globally, and she's tuned in. And, and you have to have a long-term view. But if we look at the where, from where you're sitting, as a business leader, as an owner of a company, as a strategist, but also as a kingdom person, as a child of God, what does the way look like for you? And that way can be hopefully post COVID-19, um, but in your heart, in your spirit today, if you looked at uh, the academic term as teleologically, te teleologically, what would that look like? Now, as kingdom minded people, we are the only people who walk into the future with our faces. Everybody else walks into the future with their backs. Because we know, if we look through scripture, it's not only a book for now, it's a book that's filled with revelation of the future. So we, we don't, we're not ignorant of the future. Maybe, our interpretation of the future could be clouded. But as your personal view, that's what I want to dig into, and that's what I'm sure our participants would love to hear, your, your personal view as to what does the future look like. Um, if, if you're investing in markets like now, or looking at markets, you, I'm sure you're wondering, oh, I hope Madi Shab is going to tell me where to put my money. <laughs> I, I will tell you, Put it in her company because she's, she is not only vigilant when it comes to market. She, 
She doesn't have a glass ball on a desk and look into some spiritual realm. She actually functions from a kingdom dimension. So she, she's really attuned to what's happening. So Marishaba, what does our future look like? Take us into the way. Oh, let me just, un uh, you need to unmute. Let me unmute you. There we go. Yeah, that, that's, that's a very pertinent um, question at the moment, especially um, as, as a son of God, but, but more especially when you are a leader in any capacity, either at a government level or business level, you're running your, your own business. And, I, and I'll talk about how I'm, I'm dealing with that from my personal perspective. Um, I think about two, before the lockdown, I think it was two weeks before the lockdown, the Lord spoke to me very, very clearly. And he said to me, it is now time for everything that I have been talking to you about to be implemented from a business perspective. And um, so what he was really saying is that the, the period that I had come from the last 10 years of preparation uh, personally and with various people in my ecosystem of what he has been declaring and showing us about what he's gonna do in the nations from a government perspective, from a business perspective, from the ecclesia and from a leadership perspective, that that was a time of preparation. It was a time of shaping. It was a time of putting in us and wiring in us his DNA of how to be like him for a time such as this. So when that utterance came from him that it is now time to implement there was an excitement in my spirit. So what he's saying is that don't focus on things that are falling apart, you know, around you. The economy is falling apart. You know, there's lockdown. Your business might be losing opportunities. People are dying. There's this uh, curse, this pandemic that is taking place. But rather focus on me because I will tell you what you need to do, with whom you need to do it with, and when you need to do it. So I want to talk about that what he, he's really saying to us and to me, but to all of us, is that we need to really activate spiritual intelligence. You know, we have IQ, we have EQ, and we have all other Qs. But at the moment, I would say that assuming you are aligned with them, spiritual intelligence is going to be very, very important. And I say that in the context of even what we need touched on is that when you look at um, what happened in previous uh, crashes, economic crashes, um, we can use that as a guideline or what's happened with uh, previous pandemics. We can use that as a guideline and we can try and assess to say, okay, fine, how long is it going to take uh, for economies to actually recover? How long is it going to take for financial markets to recover, right? Uh, we know that um, the World Bank uh, published a report just now in, in April where they looked at the shock of the pandemic to the global economy. I mean, you have um, GDP of Italy projected at minus 9%, okay? For South Africa, it's minus 6%, right? The number that came out recently. But when you look across the board, it's like there's really a huge drawdown on how economies are expected to perform um, at this point in time. The only two economies that are, have still, are expected to register positive growth is India and China, but everybody else is in negative uh, territory. So that's quite something big, because then it means that if you look at the uh, losses on our balance sheet in, in personal, uh, from a personal perspective or even from a business perspective, and now you look at the losses that are an anticipated in terms of uh, the, 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 the balance sheet of nations, it's quite drastic, okay? Um, so there's money and wealth and opportunities that has actually been wiped out. 
So one has to put that into perspective. The second thing that you need to look at is that there are responses from various camps in terms of trying to, to first stabilize, but to prop up economies as well. Um, you know, across the board from the US uh, to, to Europe and even to South Africa, there's just been a lot of uh, strong physical response um, uh, to the economic lockdown. I think the highest is Japan that has actually uh, really pumped in about 20% of the stimulus into the economy. South Africa, the announcement came about a, a couple of hours or a day, a day or so ago, about 10% of GDP that's going to be put back into the economy, right? The US, we know that it's about 10% of the GDP that's going to be put back into the economy. So that is exciting. It is comforting. But when you look at most of these responses, the leaders and um, the, the, the participants, we are not certain that they will work in terms of really getting us out of this slump that we, we're experiencing at the moment. Okay, so it's very important. So we've got 2008 to use as a, as a benchmark to say, okay, fine. It, during the 2008 crisis, we saw that there was a lot of policy stimulus through monetary policy. There was also quantitative easing. There was a lot of money that was printed by different central banks and so forth. And the 2008 crisis, uh, within 12 months, um, you know, the, the markets, equity markets had actually returned about 30% on the positive side. Um, and within 36 months, equity markets had actually recovered and they've registered about 40% of gains and so forth. But in, in, this po in, in this instance, and this is what I was asking the Lord, what does the future look like for us? And he clearly revealed to us uh, yesterday to say that only the plans that he has sanctioned over the nations will actually work in terms of turning economies around. So meaning that we can look at the technical expertise and the tools that we have and we have had and the experience, and it's not saying that it's not going to work. It will work, but it will not do justice in terms of the, the inheritance and the recovery that he has promised us according to scripture. So I'll go back to spiritual intelligence. So if he is saying that, it means that as a business owner, as a, as a governor of a nation or president or finance minister, whatever role you play, it means that you go to the one who has created the heaven and the earth, <laughs> who understands the times and the season and who understands what is the strategy that we need to deploy at this point in time and what is the investment strategy or policy strategy we need to deploy or even business strategy to deploy to really get it from him in terms of what that is. So when he said all the things that I have said to you that I will do from a business perspective or from a nation building perspective or in terms of Africa, so you go back to those archives that you've heard over the last 10 years, 20 years, in terms of what the Lord has actually said he's going to do through you and your business and the gifting that he has given you. And you ask him, okay, which one do I take and how do I engage with it? And what, what do we build? So, so there are really endless opportunities um, in various sectors. Um, I, I think even if you look at the impact that this uh, 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 financial crash has had in different sectors. There are certain sectors that have been very, very resilient. We know that health has been affected, but it's actually uh, lost less than uh, other sectors. Um, uh, real estate, to some extent, has also not suffered as much. Um, you know, financials have suffered quite a bit, but not as much. So we need to be asking him in terms of which industries, Lord, do you want to invest in? And how do I redirect my focus as a business to be able to harness the opportunities that you are seeing? But at the same time, uh, what I'm sitting with at the moment is the way of doing business will, will change. There's no question about that. So it's also asking, how do I re-strategize 
the strategy that you have given me for the next 10 years in terms of, uh, you know, harnessing the opportunities that are there. Uh, what kind of people do I need to bring on board in terms of my business? What sort of systems, uh, more from a communication perspective, I mean, one of the things that he dropped in my spirit is that you need to actually focus a lot on digital sales, because then that's where the world is. So, so that your business can continue to service the community or the nation, whether you can physically get on a, on a plane or not. <laughs> so these, these are some of the examples that I'm talking about that we really need to ask him to actually show us and he will actually show us. We might then be concerned about where's the capital going to come from in terms of really supporting these initiatives that the Lord is showing us or has shown us or he will reveal to us. And um, he has clearly said there is a lot of money available and he will release those resources. I know we traditionally look to the banking sector. We look to investment houses like ourselves to be able to support initiatives. Um, and we can take South Africa as an example where South Africa doesn't have um, money, right? At the moment, the South African government. Um, uh, you know, the fiscal purse is really constrained. Uh, the response that we had of about uh, 500 billion, about 48 hours ago, most of it is actually reshuffling you know, the capacity, financial capacity that the government actually has, and the government now has to borrow money if they want to really support the recovery. But the Lord has said that he will show us how to actually harness the capital resources that are required at this point in time. So what I see in a nutshell is that the, there are various opportunities. There is a strategy that he's giving to us but the future will plan out as he decides and we can get the blueprint from him on a day-by-day -day basis. That's my response to that. Wow, that, that's really fantastic. I, I will summarize at the end uh, for those who, who are tuning in. But we're talking about where and some of the, the opportunities that exist. Uh, where does the future take us? What does it look like? And we're asking input from, from our panelists. And Martin, you, I, I, I think you, you, have, you eat strategy for breakfast. What does the future look like um, from the world of Martin? Thank you, Charles. Um, I think it's not important <clears throat> what the future looks like uh, from Martin, but what the Lord is intending to do. It. And I appreciate what Rene said around, Lord, what do you see? What should we do as individuals, as people, as a country to go forward? There's a scripture in Isaiah 31 verse 1. It says, woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses and trust in chariots because they are many, and in horsemen because they are strong. But they look not to the Holy One of Israel, nor seek and consult the Lord. Now, uh, therefore, it's important that we do consult the Lord. I had a scary dream a couple of nights ago of... Uh, an uh, 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 airplane, a uh, passenger plane that took off towards the right. And just as it took off, uh, parts of the plane started uh, falling off and it crashed. And then a second plane took off in the same direction. And as it took off, the wings fell off and the back part fell off and it crashed. And when the president announced the first lockdown in South Africa, the color of the emblem of South Africa was exactly the same as the emblem, of, as the airplane that I saw in my dream. 
and a cold sweat came over me and I just realized what the Lord is showing me is there is something that is of the world from the nat natural because it took off from the left and they, that the initiative of the world, the second initiative of the president will have a short term uh, effect but then it will not succeed. It was actually quite scary and I don't like to share this, but my whole chest just, uh, you know, goes closes when I talk about it. But from a future perspective, what I would say is that we have three scenarios. It could be more, but uh, they say like in Isamusa, it had three points and uh, uh, that's a good samosa. I haven't seen a samosa with four points yet. But if you look at the first scenario, is a massive outbreak of uh, COVID-19 and expansion throughout the whole of Africa, having massive social, economic, and uh, institutional uh, meltdown that will have a total disruption of the economy and the social structure of us as Africans. The second scenario is the, the high level one, is a medical vaccine is, is developed and accepted and distributed, and there will be short-term restoration, short to medium-term restoration of markets. Now, I think that is what the uh, market analysts are hoping mostly for, is that we have a short-term situation where the vaccine that Israel has uh, allegedly already developed and is being testing, uh, that that will be distributed. And by June this year, the markets will all be back on, business will be back as usual, and that we can continue uh, uh, you know, as we were, for a matter of fact. Um, that to me is a bit of an Egypt situation. It is a resolution in the world. The third one is a no vaccine with extended lockdown, where governments will uh, protect the, the uh, nations like our president is doing now with a five level uh, lockdown strategy where you will see certain components of the economy uh, starting to function, but the world will not be the same. It will be in a semi lockdown for continued time to come uh, <clears throat> until we've reached more or less a 60% uh, 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 influence where, where most people are. Uh, uh, built up antibodies and we can then start functioning again. <clears throat> but that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, will be a long-term restoration of the markets. My suggestion is that we, uh, if we look to the future, we need to just take one step back and rest in the Lord and listen to what he is doing. And uh, <clears throat> a friend of mine sent me a, a WhatsApp yesterday. He said, what do you have in your hand? It's like the Lord saying to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Take what is in your hand. Look at opportunities within what you have. Grow from that. Uh, explore the opportunities in the markets. And I think that in that, in him, we will find our rest. So I'm a bit shorter than Madhya Jaba. <laughs> uh, I, I, was trying to out, I was trying to outdo Rini earlier. <laughs> Look here, um, I just need to remind you, this is a free <laughs> webinar. You don't get paid for minutes. So I, I know you can bill your clients per minute. But <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we have 30, 27 minutes left. So we want to get into the how, and some of you are, are dropping nuggets of how we're going to get through this and what we need to do. So we're going to summarize that in the end, and this document will be available to people to will go out there and say, if you're going to survive, you're going to be victorious in this current season, 
this is what you need to do. And it's shaped on where we are at now, where we're going to be, and these are the key things that you need to be obedient to in this season. So we still, we've got a few minutes to stay with the where, Roland and the need. So if we could just take another, just a few minutes to hear about what's your interpretation of the way, and then we will summarize and close off with what do you believe people need to be doing right now? How, how do they get through the season? So Roland, the way, what does it look like for you? Oh, let me just, you're muted. Can you hear Thanks, me? Charles. Here we go. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, uh, much like uh, Martin has uh, said, I, I um, can also see three scenarios, but uh, with a little difference. Uh, the first one is that um, uh, God works a fantastic miracle, and um, this uh, plague is stayed. There's a tremendous economic and social uh, miraculous recovery in our country, all over the world, and everybody applauds that, and, and it's fantastic. There's lots of people turning to the Lord and calling on his name to be saved. The second one, uh, the second scenario, is that there's a slow and very difficult and also very volatile uh, re recovery, which takes a couple of years. Uh, I, I don't know. Nobody really knows, but... Uh, let's say, as Martin has, has pointed out, it's very painful, very difficult, very volatile. So there's an easing up, there's a closing down, there's a getting better, there's a getting worse, uh, and so forth. But, but really not, not functioning well. And then the third one, surprise, surprise, there's the rapture. So the church is evacuated and the church escapes the terrible wrath that is to come. And that is the final judgment. So again, I... I really want to emphasize that we need to understand God's prophetic timeline because it does help us to understand things aren't falling apart. They are coming together in terms of God's timeline and his prophecy. Uh, the major thing we need to understand, as many of, of the panelists have pointed out, is how do we understand what it means for us, our role and our purpose. And I think I want to just summarize it in terms of... Um, God's word to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1, uh, that each one of us has a holy assignment. He's called us to those holy assignments. And Renier specifically pointed out, out and Kelfilo also, that this time now is very important that we know and understand what each respective person's holy assignment is and, and just getting on with the job with God's power, empowering us and anointing us to do that really well. So uh, I have no doubt that Holy Spirit uh, will empower us, will uh, anoint us, will inspire us to have faith solutions that lead to God solutions to help the world uh, in, in one way or another, make people's lives easier, make them happier, uh, help them uh, to live life more conveniently and a lot better. And at the same time, um, speak God's word into people's lives that they understand and know that the only person, the only way out of uh, the situation, whether they are comfortable or whether they are in discomfort, whether they are poor, whether they are rich, is to call on the name of the Lord and be saved. Because he says unequivocally, anybody, all who calls upon his name uh, will be saved. So uh, I have no doubt that in terms of the church, um, when we call upon him, he will save us. That's what his, his word says. Uh, when we uh, look for him and when we ask him, Lord, what is this holy assignment? How am I going to get the job done? Where am I going to get the resources? All those things. He is going to give you everything. Uh, and especially I take heart from Isaiah 55 in terms of, of uh, what he says. You know what? He sends us to people who've never heard of us. So if you're worried about customers, he will send us to the right customers, as Kelofilo also said. And uh, he will also send people to us who, who've never heard of us. So th there's great hope. There, there is great power. Uh, and there can be great certainty in God's word. 
So that is where I want to end off, Charlie, and, and I trust that's, that's helpful. Thanks. Wow, oh, it's amazing. An economist counting souls. <laughs> um, I'm well, a barefoot economist. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks, Roland. Renier, what does the way look like? You're meeting with all these people, um, sitting in all these meetings every day. Um, I'm sure sometimes you get so frustrated with the narrow view, but you, you, you're in a, a marketplace as a very outspoken child of God, as a Christian. Um, you know, how do you describe the way for us and even for the officials you meet with in circles that you meet, what does the way look like? Okay, thanks, Charles. So once again, I'm going to take it from um, just as the now from the world leaders perspective and now from the world leaders and now from the national perspective and now from the kingdom perspective. So the future from a world leaders perspective is pushing the agenda to control. It's a, going to be a much more controlled environment. It's controlling, controlling. It's about controlling people. It's about controlling things. Um, so that is really um, the agenda. And, um, <clears throat> but we must take heart in that, that they will not be allowed to push through ahead of time what they've not been authorized by the Lord to do. That, as a believer, you must understand. So, but that's from a world leadership point of view. That's the future. It's about control. Control of the city, control of people, control of um, the economy, whatever the case may be. Secondly, from, an, from, a, from a nation, the nation that you're in point of view, we're going to see, um, and this is what people are talking about as well, the leaders out there, much stronger localized economies because less dependence on, on uh, imports and international the way it has been up to now. This global economy has taken a big knock, um, and, but it's all part of, part of the Lord's doing in terms of that. It, it, it had to take that knock. So localized economies, um, you're gonna see within a nation, um, food security for a nation, localized economies in terms of a region, just a region, a regional perspective is going to become much stronger in terms of focus from an economic development point of view. Then coming to um, from what we understand from the Lord's point of view, from a kingdom, massive, massive reduction in poverty across Africa. And when I say poverty, is that undoing poverty in spirit, soul, body, and economically. It means people will come into the kingdom. So that's from a spiritual point of view. Wholeness will come to people. Um, and health will come to people. And then there will be economic um, advancement across the continent of Africa, very specifically in the future ahead of us. And I just want to... Um, say this to the believers that that is in this in this chat room or whatever you want to call it is that that what the as Caleb um, referred to this is that that what the lord spoke to you <laughs> before COVID 19. <laughs> he knew about COVID 19 he knew what was coming he, he has spoken that so it is in your hand as martin said it is in your hand. And this decade is the decade of the fulfillment of the promises. It is, it is the time for you to walk by faith, motivated by love. It, it, is, it is not a... Amen. It is, it is, it is, don't be phased by this. Don't be... Yes, it's happening. And, and, but he's given you a strategy even before COVID-19 happened. Follow through in terms of your strategy. This is so crucial for you. I mean, we have done it as our organization. We've done it. Um, and we see in the midst of COVID-19 how we advance economically <laughs> because we're still following the same strategy. The, Lord, the Lord's not going to give you strategy before the time and, and 
now this happens. Oh, shit, sorry, Renee, I made a mistake. Um, let's just go back to the drawing board. <laughs> no, no, I know the plans I have for you, plans to advance you. I know what you're going through. But may this not be said of us, Charles, what Joshua said to the Israelites in Joshua 18. <clears throat> seven years, I think it was seven or something like that years, into the time that they've been in the promised land. And this is the decade for us in the promised land. This is the promised land time. Is that, um, and promised land time means that that what the Lord has spoken to you, you're going to see the fulfillment of this. And he called them together and he says, and there remained among the Israelites seven tribes who had not yet received the inheritance. May this not be said of you in this time. May this not be said to you seven years down the line that you have not possessed that what the Lord has spoken to you and allocated and given to you. And, um, and then he said to them, Joshua asked the Israelites, how long will you be slack to go up and in possess the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers has given you? How long will you be slack? And that you, and, and, and I mean, really, I mean, and, and I speak to each and every one of us, let us not be slack in this season. God has not changed his plans that is revealed to you and that is spoken to you for the future that is ahead. So, um, so yeah, so that's, um, so that was just about the immediate future, the short term future. 10 years is a short term future. Uh, beyond that, um, so I just know a serious time is coming. And that's why we need to embrace this future that is now ahead of us in the now, in the everyday now with the Lord. Thanks, Charles. Well, thanks, thanks, Rene. That was very powerful. It sounds like we, we're looking at a 10 year bridge. We're coming to the end, we've got 15 minutes. So I'm going to ask you just to sum up. Really, if, if you were sitting, and Madhishaba, you had a client sitting in front of you and say, Madhishaba, tell me, what do I need to do now to get to this? We hear it's a season of, it's 10 years, that it's an amazing time for the church. It's a time to really tap in and to receive this inheritance Renee mentioned. It's... Um, Roland said it's time for faith solutions to be, be seen, become visible. And Manishaba, you said it's time to, to revisit our prophecies that have been spoken. It's a um, time for tremendous growth in digital sales and looking at those markets and looking at where money and resources will be made supernaturally available through, through avenues you never expected. What advice would you tell? There are a lot of business people. There are a lot of leaders. Um, mm. Some leaders are overseeing many other leaders that are on our, our pen on our group today listening in. What advice would you give them as to how do they face today and tomorrow? What strategies? What do they need to do right now? Um, and let me let me unmute you, Madhishaba. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, I'll I'll be very practical, and something that has worked for me and it continues to work is that I know the faithfulness of God. Um, and He is a man of His word. <laughs> He is true. He is steadfast. And what he says he will do, he does it. And um, in the last uh, three years, I have seen God tell me I will do this and he does it. To give you an example for our business, we had been, he had taken us through a period where it was, um, we had to learn to steward capital to support business operations. And we had to live by faith, if, if you want to use that expression. And Rene is a chairperson for, for the business that, um, that we run. So uh, to an, a point where it's like sometimes you want to go back for money, but he doesn't allow you. And, um, and 
a month before this whole thing happened, he actually gave us 50% uh, of our revenue through a grant because he knew what was coming. And he has said, I will provide for you, I will protect you. Because if you remember the story of Passover, it's like there was supernatural protection for those that had the blood on their doorposts. <laughs> there was supernatural provision for where they were going in terms of the assignment that they're going into. Um, and there was revelation of strategy. When the children of Israel were in the desert now, there was Moses, but the Lord also called them to engage with them, and they denied him that opportunity. But at every point, there was a revelation the Lord was giving in terms of where to go, what to do, how to do things. You know, governance structures were given to them, how to relate as communities and so forth, which, which gets me to, I'm going to summarize with this, is that the Lord is faithful that when he says, when you seek him and you wait on him and you listen to him, he will show you exactly what to do every, every, every second of the day on a daily basis. That's how I'm running the business. That's how I'm living. And um, as he reveals that to you, you act on it. I saw another question, somebody saying, what if you never had the strategies or the prophecies the Lord had given you before? and you find yourself now, and uh, you don't know what to do, then ask him. Don't do anything, hear from him, ask him to reveal to you. If you don't get anything, the next thing that I wanna say, it's a time of getting back into the ecosystems that the Lord had connected us with, or that he's preparing for us for this point in time. Because some of the things we can't do alone, so really go back to your tribe of, or find a new tribe where you can actually reason together, strategize together, implement together, share together. Where does that take us? We've got a model of that, right? When the church was born in the book of Acts. Um, so he's calling us back to that community and that's how I wanna end my session today. Thank you. Wow, powerful. Thank you. So. We, we have a few minutes. So what I hear you say, it's steward your capital wisely, live by faith. God will provide supernatural protection, provision, and revelation for your next step. Ask from him and he will give. Get back to your ecosystem. Find that ecosystem, get back to it. Get back to your tribe the community that the Lord has called you back, go back into community, into connecting with, the way I say it, connect with grace. And thank you. Wow. Um, a lot of people are asking for this recording already or for the notes. So, tremendous value. Martin, your final words. What do we need to do now? We've got a basically two minutes, three minutes left each. Charles, I'm going to be very short. Um, I think is, we, no, I don't have a samosa, but I've got a full pen pen. <laughs> uh, the first one is assess where you are. Find out what is going on around you. Assess your realities. Uh, assess your finances. Assess the products, the the, the clients, the circumstances, uh, approach the Lord and ask him, why am I here? What is going on? How does it affect me? Uh, engage with others because in the counsel of many, there is wisdom. That's the first point is to find out where are you? And in that, not to fear. Uh, for me, I think the biggest a burden that we carry is fear, and fear is, is, uh, is a ghost, and let us not fear. The second point is just to go back to the Lord. You probably have more time now. Be quiet and say, what is my purpose and my calling? Am I still functioning in the purpose and calling that the Lord has placed me where I am? 
should I be doing what I'm doing? Isn't there another way, a better way, uh, a creative way? What are these things that the Lord is bringing to mind now to, to further the calling and the purpose and the appointment that he gave us? I mean, Jeremiah 1, he says to us, even before you were formed in the womb of your mother, I knew you, I approved of you, I consecrated you, and I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. And I think that if we can take up our position and our calling and move forward, that is powerful. The third point is, what is the vision that the Lord is revealing unto you right now? Like Rene says, Lord, what do you see? Lord, can I see what you are seeing? Reveal it to me in a dream, a word of wisdom, a, a vision or a reality that I can hold on to. And then once you have the vision, the fourth point is then ask the Lord to assist you, to guide you with a plan to implement and to achieve the vision that he has set before you. I think if you can just sit right now where you are and use that as a reality, I mean, the Lord does not lie and he loves you incredibly much and he wants to guide you in the future with hope prosperity and with peace. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. And thank you. You, you really have come alive from early this morning, the pain you were in. Thank you. I, I will summarize everything in the last closing comments. But Roland, um, you, you, I, I've been with you, I've seen the insights you have given and the advice and the strategies you have helped other business leaders with and even the, the bold steps you've taken in your own business. What, what would you tell a business person who's tuning in, in one minute that you have, what would you tell them right now? Do this. Yeah. I think, Charles, Charles it starts with a, a total change in mind. A total different way of thinking is, is just to, I, I, this is something also very personal and individual because I've been trained as an economist in a certain way uh, in, in, to think and so forth. I've, I've had to unload all of that. Uh, I don't know if I've been rid of all of that, but uh, at least I'm getting there. Uh, so I think the first thing is, is just a total change in the way one thinks. We can't think normally or conventionally, but we've got to think according to God's kingdom, according to how, how his economy works. So as we've heard now from the other panelists, it, it really starts with that. So it starts having complete and absolute faith in God. And faith comes from hearing his word. Um, so, and knowing his word and confessing his word. So, Meditate on God's word, hear from God. And I uh, personally and, and uh, all those, uh, my family with us in this family business that we have, the, the word that is pertinent to us uh, includes some of the, the following. Deuteronomy 8.18, 8, he gives us the power to be successful. So our power doesn't come from anywhere else, as, as Martin's indicated, not from uh, Egypt or anywhere, but he gives us the power. So have absolute faith in that. And every day, if we can say that uh, to, uh, to ourselves and to our, our spirit and our mind, until there's a total change and a trust that God is indeed the one who gives us the power. And then Ephesians 1, 17 to 19, uh, he gives us the spirit of wisdom and re revelation to come up with faith solutions, great solutions, God solutions to meet people's uh, needs. And then 2 Samuel 5 verse 12, where, where David Years from the Lord, and he understands that, that he is king to help Israel. Uh, the, the, the position of king is there to help Israel, to be a servant, to be a helper, uh, to, to make, make things uh, a, lot, a lot better. So you see how powerful God's word is. And then I want to end with just something very practical. Uh, so when we start to apply God's word that is pertinent to us and relevant to us, he equips us, he empowers us for our holy assignment, and, and I mean, it, it's absolutely flabbergasting, as we've heard from Kilofila, how, how God miraculously brings 
um, provision. And, and that's the last few scriptures I want to, want to give you. First Kings uh, chapter 17, verse 16. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 4. Luke 5, verses 1 to 4, where, where there's all these miracles related to business, about the fish, about the oil, about um, uh, uh, how, how God miraculously increased um, what, whatever has been provided. Uh, so this is how powerful God's word is for us in the kingdom. Now, now that to me is amazing. And that to me is, is, is so fantastic because we have God's word. And if we have God's word, that is sufficient. Wow. Amen. Thank you, Roland. Unload your thinking, meditate on the word, and revisit the miracles in scripture that you just quoted us. Thank you. Amazing stuff. Runeer, you, you always get the final words. Good, yeah. Um, thanks, Charles. Yes, I, I th I'm pretty much, I mean, what's on my heart, um, everyone has uh, said already. And I think I just want to um, share this um, analogy that I received, and that was prior to COVID-19, as the Lord took me on a, on a separation for seven days and, and in fasting prayer. And Two things. In this time, you need to understand that you need to walk in two realms at the same time. You need to walk as a priest before the Lord and the people, and you need to walk as a king before him in this land. Mm -hmm. As a priest, you intercede for people. You, you bring people before the Lord. And he says so beautiful in Isaiah 45, he says, come and talk to me about my children and leave my work to me. Secondly, as a king, as a king, you then decree. You decree the very things that the Lord speaks to you. On that, the last day of those seven days, he revealed this to me, he said to me, for now, six and whatever days you have been before me as a priest, and now I'm going to give you what you need to decree, but you cannot decree as a priest. You decree now as a king. Lord gave me decrees over 13 businesses that we work with, clients of ours. And since that time up to now, he has performed, if I can use that word, he has, he has, he has done those, he has spoken those words directly to those business people, whether they're born again or not. He had given me the time to speak those words to them. And from that, we have seen the response in the spiritual realm, a reaction in the spiritual realm and a response by the earth and by the markets to the word of the Lord for those clients very specifically. So, um, so, it, is, so it is extremely important that you, that you understand this walk before the Lord. It's a very practical thing because sometimes we confuse the two. Um, this is no time for confusion in terms of how you walk as a priest and a king before the Lord and in the earth before the people. Whatever God does is for his glory and for the profit of man. You must always understand that. Whatever he does is for his glory and for the profit of man. Secondly, the picture he gave me on the last day, he said to me, Rene, he showed me a stage. Um, and we were on the stage. God's people were on the stage. It's like a play. And before me, I saw the audience. But I saw that the audience was sitting in darkness. Like typically when you go to a, to, to a play. The audience, the lights are off over the audience and the lights are on, on, the, on the stage. And then I saw a stage behind me, but the curtain on the stage behind me was closed and the curtain on the stage that we were standing on was drawn, it was open. And, um, and he said to me, I have now moved you from the old into the new. So you must understand it as God's people. And when I said you, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about my people. I've moved you from the old states into the new states. And this was at the, at the changeover of the new year. Um, and he said to me, the old is, is, is gone. It's past. Don't look back to the old. The curtain is closed on the old. You're now in the new states. And then as I looked, I saw the stage was completely furnished with everything that was required for this play to happen. For this act, and the word that I received is the acts 
you know, you, a place with various acts, they call it. He said, they say to me, the acts are about to happen. And then I looked at the audience and I said, Lord, so a play is always, has got a purpose for an audience. It is written for a purpose what needs to happen. And then he showed me this audience and he said, they're in darkness. And the very purpose of my children on the stage at the moment is to act according to the script that you have received from the producer. Everyone has got his or her script. And as you act it in obedience, motivated by my love, it will bring laughter, hope, and joy to this audience that's sitting in darkness. And the audience will look at you as my people and they will see absolute harmony, unity, because each and every one of you know you have received your script and you're not trying to do another one's work on the stage. You're following that, what I've given you. And so we, we know when we go and watch a play or a movie, when we, when we just marvel, seamless, I mean, beauty, harmony, the actors, everyone is in harmony. And that's the picture that he showed me. That is the now that we you come before the Lord, Father, what do you see? If I saw a question here, someone put a question, Charlie, and said, I enjoy the many perspectives and gaining understanding that God has spoken previously to individuals with ideas, strategies, promises for the season. So my question is, what is the recourse for those who haven't had this privilege and how does one unpack what you have received into actions? So simply, as a child of God, you come before him and you ask him, Father, what do you see? You wait, you receive your answer. Lord, what do you pray? You pray that as a priest and as a king, because there will be a praying where you bring it before the altar, bring it before the Lord, and then it's a time to decree it. Don't mix up the two. We understand it very, very clearly. Very, very important to be effective in your prayer life in this, at this point in time. Then you say, Lord, what do I speak? That's part of that decree. Now you speak it. You speak it as a king with the authority. Don't tolerate. Say, enough is enough. Don't tolerate that intruder any longer. Don't tolerate that poverty, that sickness, that whatever it is that is plaguing you, that fear in your mind. Don't tolerate it. It's an unwelcome intruder. You don't tolerate intruders. So, and then last one, Lord, what do I do? What is the script for me? What do I do? And with whom do I do it? Marishaba spoke about it. With whom do I do it? Where do I do it? When do I do it? And at that point, my dog is saying, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so glad is your dog and not a family member. Uh, um, well, thank you so much. We at the end of our time to Madishaba, Roland, Martin, Renee. Thank you for your time, giving up your time. I know you have hectic schedules. Um, you you're not in lockdown. You've been so busy. Martin, thank you for your daily posts and your encouragement on how to survive in times of crisis. Very powerful. Thank you for unpacking the scriptures every day. And then for speaking into the lives. There's so many business people that are sending me messages saying thank you for this initiative. Thank you for speaking. People requesting recordings. I posted a note. If you want the notes from today, I can send it to you. I'll email it to you. But to our panelists, God bless you. And, and I, I, I'm also involved in ministry. And the way we celebrate in ministry is we take an offering. Um, so what, this, this is a free webinar, but we want to help other business leaders who are struggling. If, if you want to be part of that, I will send out a link for the PayPal account. And you can just say, pay it forward. And we, as the Prowers Leadership Institute, we will use that funds to help businesses, maybe it's just to um, help them <clears throat> with a small token or gift, or even get more of these video conferences or training available to business leaders. But from my end, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the time. This recording is available. It's going to be open to anyone. And please share it. It's an uh, initiative of the Leadership Institute to help business leaders. 
And I think there's so much meat here. I wish I could summarize, but our time is up. Thank you, panelists. Lovely seeing you in this way. It's a new experience for all of us. And I would entertain you and try and put my mask over my eyes, but I... Uh, <laughs> it was so funny last night. I feel it. You stole, stole that trick from me. <laughs> um, God bless you. Have an awesome day in the Lord. <laughs> Please, bye -bye. show any strength. Thank you. I'll do that. Do that, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you all. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.